So the first step that we're going to start looking at this evening is where we discover the entities and assign attributes to those entities. We will start to look at that tonight. The second thing after that is deriving what is known as unary and binary relationships. Next, we develop a simplified entity relationship diagram. Then we list the assertions and then we create the detailed ER diagram using the assertion. Now, what is an entity? That's the first question that we need to ask and answer. Could somebody check that out for me? Somewhere in the book, the definition of an entity. Right, a tangible object of interest that exists in the user's domain. It is something of interest that the user keeps track of somewhere, somehow. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to look at the problem and then we're going to look at now how do we get these objects of interest. And they're not only objects of interest, they're objects of interest taken from the user's domain. Again, from time to time, a lot of times we will talk about the user and the user and the user. And remember I said we can use the word user or client, right, interchangeably. And remember, at the end of the day, you're not working for yourself, you're working for someone. Someone will come to you and say, look, I have a problem. I would like this done. You'll see what OK Database is a nice uh, solution to what you have here. And you have to take words, or you have to use the vocabulary from their domain. You can't just do your own thing and just say, well, OK, well, I have a table one, a table two, a table three. What is table one? It's always nicer to use stuff from the user's domain. And also, it helps in creating a, an appropriate solution. And after that, we will assign the attributes to each entity. We will also talk about attributes. But very quickly, what do we say an attribute is here? The attribute describes the characteristics of the entity. It is a property of the entity. Right? Now, when we, when we look at the problem in a little while, you will see the difference between the attribute and the entity. And it's very easy to get them confused. Very, very easy. Now, let's first of all have a look at the first problem that we have. Uh, I call this here case study one. And that is on page 15. Let's have a look at it. Lecturers at the community, community college want an app application that will help them to keep track of the students they are advising and how far along they are in their degree compl completion. They primarily want to know which lecturers advise which students and which students register for which courses. They also want to know when the student registered for a course and what grade they got. Users must log in to gain access and the application must keep track of the application. How do we go about deriving the entities? And then after that, how do we get the attributes for the so entities? We have to look at this now to see, okay, what are tangible objects of interest. Nouns and the collective nouns, those are what usually form the objects of what interest. What you will do is that you will take this here now and underline the objects. What are some of the nouns that you can pick out here? Students, Students. 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 Lecturers. lecturers, courses, Sorry? courses. courses. Grades. grades, users. If you look at the bottom of page 15, what I have done here now is I have the same problem, but I have underlined the objects of interest. It says each object of interest becomes an entity that will be used as part of the database design. Now, this is a very, very important part of the design process. Now, if you get things wrong here, it can be perpetrated all the way through, straight to the implementation. So if you get these wrong, you're in some trouble. So you need to be able to pick them out and to identify them correctly. Right? Now, there's another little box that says, remember, double check to ensure that the entities listed capture all of the objects of interest in the problem domain. So you check and then you double check. Usually, usually you double check with the client to ensure to say, look, you're sure this is what you want, everything here, is what you want. There isn't anything else that you want because usually what happens is you will go and come back and you say, oh, but you know, um, yes, you need, you didn't indicate this or you didn't put that in and that causes a problem for you down the road. Yeah. Yes, 
that yeah, yeah. because it, down the road now when you have finished the design they will come back and say to add something else and that will cause confusion because it will mix up your entire design now that's the first case study let's look at the other one now this one seems fairly straightforward a smaller fountain accounted form wants a simple HR application that will help it to keep track of its employees it must keep track of all the positions at the form, the employees filling these positions, the allowances for these positions, the salary scales for these positions, and the vehicles assigned to these positions. Now you notice how it is worded here. Right. And again, I will mention to you that it is an art and you don't have to worry too much about this here now. But this results from a lot of back and forth with the client. So, what are some of the nouns or collective nouns that we have here? Employees, positions, allowances, salary scales, vehicles. That's it. The list for this one here is on uh, page 16, at the bottom of page 16. And again, remember, Double check to ensure that they capture everything from the problem domain. That is, you have to take this here, take it back to the user and say, these are all the things you want to capture, right? You don't want me to store information about anything else. That's right, are you sure? <laughs> yes. That's right. You're sure, yes. Because remember, after you finish here and you move forward, it's going to be difficult to come back and make changes okay now there's another case study in the book that you can look at um, at uh, during your own time that one is a little more complicated okay so we move on now to page 18 and that talks about assigning attributes to each of the entities that were discovered again I lay out the steps Right? But first of all, we have to talk about attributes. Now, what is an attribute? What did I define an attribute as? A characteristic. And what, let's say, is a characteristic of an entity? Another word for characteristic is what? What's the other word that I use? Uh, property. Property. The property, yes, it's there. Yeah? So let's take employee or employees, for example. What are some of the characteristics of the employee? Again, you have to look back to the client. What are some of the things about the employee the client wants to capture? And you always have to bear that in mind. Because you will be thinking, okay, sex, age, date, birth, and a whole host height, weight. But the employee might not, they, sorry, the client might not want to know their weight and their height and those different things. They might want to know their names and their date of birth, that kind of thing. So again, it's always you have to get back to the client. Right? So the characteristics or the properties of each of these attributes, each of these entities is what we call an attribute right now I say here that finding all of them can be very tedious and it requires that you work very closely with the client right now here is what gathering documents and forms from the, the, the problem domain because usually let's say you have a car rental and you go to rent a car they will give you a form to fill in they will have things like the make, model, year, color, mileage, and those kinds of things. Right. So that now, that form or that document will give you an idea as to what information they capture. So whatever information they capture on that form, you have to capture in your database. Because remember, you're trying you at the end of the day, they will want to replace that paper with whatever you have created for them. Or maybe take what's on the paper and put it inside. Another very important thing about attributes is this. They should represent one and only one characteristic or property of an entity. They shouldn't represent multiple characteristics. Now, 
As examples, I have things like uh, telephone numbers, address, and full name. Now, usually when you go to, let's say, uh, pay online, do they ask you for your full name? Yeah. Uh, okay, when do they ask you for your full name? When you're entering the credit card information. When you're the credit card information. When you're filling in the mailing address now, do they ask your full name or do they split it up? They do split it up. The only time they ask for the full name is with the credit card because that's how it appears on the credit card. Other than that, otherwise when you're registering, you normally have uh, your mailing instructions. Last name and first name. That's because they represent two distinct things. In the instance of the credit card, it represents one attribute, which is the name on the card. That's one thing. Otherwise, your last name and your first name are two different things. And that is, uh, that is what you have to do with attributes. Ensure that they are capturing one item. One, they are only capturing one thing or one property or one characteristic. First, list the possible properties that are recorded in the problem domain. Again, if you have those form or forms, list them. If you're creating, for example, a car rental, a database for car rental, they have make, model, year, they might not have the mileage. They might have the mileage. They might have information about the fuel, where it is or where it was. Whatever they record, you record. Next. Ensure that every attribute is where it belongs. Now, this is the tricky part. Right now, this goes back to uh, something in databases the actual theory uh, that has to do with normalization, and that is the part where you ensure that every attribute is where that attribute is supposed to what be. You, what you need to do is take each one of these and see that it belongs only in that column or in that <laughs> particular column. There, if it belongs in more than one column, take it out. And that's why grade is not there. Because grade would have belonged to both the student and the, and the course. So whatever is in there should belong to there and there alone. That column or that entity and that entity only. These are the bare bones, these are the basics that we need. Now, a lot of times for entities, they will have a name and a description. But those two words, name and description, down the line they can give you problems. Because when you come to Microsoft Access and maybe uh, some other servers, if you have an entity and it has an attribute called name, which will actually work out to be uh, one of the columns in the table, that can create a problem when you're programming. Uh, if you're actually writing code and you want to use name, you'll have to use in Access, you'll have to use square brackets and all of those different things. Some database systems might not allow you to use name and description because they will be what are called reserved words in the system. So it's nice if you're gonna talk about the name, it's the position name or the position description. If you have details, you put the details in, right? Sometimes you might need a code. Instead of a name and a description, they might have a code for the salary scale. Whatever they put on the form, that is what you want to put in. Also, you want to ensure that whatever it is that you have there, belongs to one and only one column.